Welcome to our second video on sizing precast concrete spanning members. This one focusing on hollow core planks and used in conjunction with L beams. You'll recall that in our previous one, we looked at double T's. In this case, we're focusing on hollow core planks or so-called HCPs. And we got the lettering in the wrong sequence here. We talked about precast uh, double T's and we worked up a design for a simple building with a 60 foot uh, simple span for the double T's uh, supported at each end by these fairly deep spandrel beams which are referred to in the concrete industry or the precast industry as L beams because this ledger gives the uh, general shape of that beam uh, to look like the letter L. And in that sizing procedure, we um, chose uh, two foot, 10 inch deep double T's that includes a topping. So it's actually a 32 inch or two foot, eight inch deep double T that's shipped to the site. And then a two inch topping is put on the top of it. So the overall structural depth is two feet, 10 inches or 34 inches, which is very close to three feet. So if we divided our 60 foot span by a depth of roughly three feet, we get our classic L over 20 proportions, which tends to be near the deep end of what's recommended in our guidelines. So if you go to chapter one, it talks about concrete double T's. It shows a profile of something like this. And it says the deepest proportions are typically L over 20. So we ended up in this particular design problem with proportions at the deep end of what's normal. And that shouldn't be surprising because you'll recall that we were designing for 80 to 100 feet of live load, uh, which tends to be towards the really heavy end of what these members are normally designed for. Uh, may come as a surprise to some of you, but parking decks actually are only designed to about 20 pounds a square foot. We think of automobiles as tremendously heavy, but in, and in fact they do produce very large localized loads where the wheels are located. But when you average the load over the entire area of the parking deck, automobiles are actually one of the lighter loads that we ever designed for. Um, so if we were going to design something like a parking deck, we tend to be towards this shallower end. And just to illustrate that point, we'll go back to our table for double T's. And you'll notice that um, here, for example, let's look down at this lower end and I will magnify this particular um, image and zoom in on the bottom of it. So what I'm going to do is blow up this table so you can actually see it. So the lower part of the table um, <clears throat> says that if we wanted to design for something more moderate, like uh, 43 pounds a square foot, we go down here and if we were targeting 40, for example, this says 43 would work. So that's a reasonable load that's uh, something like a residence, so it's even more than a parking garage. Uh, the span is 84 feet and the depth of it is roughly uh, three feet. And so when you divide those numbers out, you get something more in the neighborhood of L over 28. So this is how we explain our original guidelines, which look like this, that the proportions of double T's go from L over 20 to L over 28. Now let's go look for a moment at the shape of the double T. One of the problems with the T-beam is that it tends to not be very stiff. And what I mean by that is we have this tiny little stem down here, which is chucked full of high-strength steel cable. Uh, 
and that's very strong, but the problem is that it stretches quite a bit uh, under load, and as a consequence, double T's tend to be uh, deeper than they would need to be, strictly as governed by the issue of deflection. In other words, they're more than adequate in strength, but they have a deflection limitations. So there exists a structural form that we can make out a precast, which is much more favorable, and that's the so-called hollow core plank. So here you have one, for example, that's four feet wide and eight inches deep, and then on top of that eight inches we put our customary two inches of topping, so the overall depth is ten inches. Um, one of the advantages to this structural form is that there's a lot of concrete near the bottom. In other words, it behaves more like a wide flange beam as opposed to a T-beam where there are flanges both top and bottom in the case of the hollow core plank and that makes it stiffer. So if our intention is to really severely limit deflection while getting a very, very shallow structure, will tend to go to hollow core planks over double T's. Uh, the problem with hollow core planks is they're made by a process called extrusion where the concrete has to hold its own shape without formwork, which turns out to be very economical to make, but we have difficulty making really deep um, hollow core planks. And so at some point we settle for doing double T's just because the uh, forming process is more reliable and easier. But up to some reasonable size of members, the hollow core planks are going to be structurally favored because they can be made shallower while still spanning substantial lengths. The uh, designations for hollow core planks are worked up in a, in a manner very similar to double T's. Here you have a 4HC8, which means 4 feet wide, it's hollow core, and it's 8 inches deep, and you can get data on it for no topping, or in typical architectural applications there will always be a topping, so this is the part of the table that we will tend to look at down at the bottom here. Um, Again, the table will give you safe, superimposable service load, which typically means live load, although that may be broken down into both live and dead. And also these tables, if I didn't mention this before, I want to now, are not load factored tables. They are simple, look up the number of superimposed load and you have the solution. And I will reiterate that the self-weight of the hollow core plank, as was the case for double T's, is already accounted for. So this is safe, superimposable load. So we don't have to do any calculations to account for the self-weight of these members. <clears throat> Again, we have a strand pattern designation. Um, the first number is the number of strands. The second number is the diameter. So in this case, it's seven strands, six sixteenths in diameter, so that's three eighths inch strand, and S stands for straight. In other words, there are no depressed points, no variation in the shape of the cable, the steel cable. It's stretched to be flat or straight uh, before the concrete is cast around it. There are uh, a bunch of different manufacturers of so-called hollow core planks. Um, they have their own uh, proprietary shapes for the uh, holes that occur. Some use more holes and place them closer together and make them narrower. Um, and it's up to them to decide what they perceive to be the best way to do this. And, um, in some cases, there will be separate tables for each of those types of hollow core planks, or in some cases, they will share data in that they have very similarly behaving hollow core planks, and um, they want to present uh, a simplified set of data that works for all of them.
So these tables again have a certain strand code that occurs. So uh, at the top of the table there will be the overall dimensions, four feet wide, eight inches deep. Um, there's a drawing that shows uh, the general uh, shape of the cross section, where the strands occur, the uh, stress grades for the various materials that are involved. And when we get to the tables, the tables say safe superimposed load. So for example, for something with this strand pattern, uh, we can get 110 pounds of safe superimposable load at 29 foot span or at 30 foot span 95. So that's the safe superimposable load. And then uh, there's two numbers down below that. Uh, one of them is the um, is the uh, camber, the rise of the center of it. So in this case, it's a half an inch. At a 30 foot length, there's a half inch camber. And then the long term camber is actually negative. There's a slight deflection. And that's due to the fact that the concrete creeps slightly over time. So uh, this key up here, by the way, explains those three numbers. The first number is the safe superimposed service load in pounds per square foot. The second number is the estimated camber at erection in inches. And then there's the long-term camber, which is the second. Now, these, these numbers can go either way. For example, if you have uh, enough uh, stress in the steel, the steel may cause the camber to increase over time as the steel at the bottom begins to uh, cause creep in the material at the bottom. So you will have to look at each situation to see, um, but the more steel you have, the more the uh, creep tends to induce greater camber over time. So one of the things I want to talk about are proportions. I mentioned that because of the amount of material at both top and bottom of a hollow core plank, it tends to perform better from a deflection point of view. And therefore we tend to be able to build it with much more shallow proportions than a double T. And just to illustrate this point, uh, here we have um, a four foot wide by 12 inch deep uh, hollow core plank. The 12 inches is the originally fabricated element. Then we're going to add the two inch topping. So this is actually 14 inches deep. And you'll notice that uh, the table goes up to about 46 foot of span. So if we take 46 feet and we divide by 14 inches, and then we convert that 14 inches to um, feet units and decimals so that we have uh, a proper dimensionless ratio. We discover that the proportions are in the neighborhood of L over 40. So if we go back uh, to our guidelines, right down, uh, right above concrete double T's, we have hollow core planks and you'll notice that the proportions are for shallow, the shallow end, L over 30, L over 40 for the, excuse me, L over 30 for the deep proportions and L over 40 for shallow. So in other words, these numbers illustrate the point I'm making that because of deflection issues associated with only having a T section rather than a flange on top and bottom, the double T's have more deflection concerns, which limits how shallow we can make them. So they're in the range of L over 28 to L over 20, whereas hollow core planks are in the range of L over 40 to L over 30. This is one of the best proportions that we get out of anything in a simple span mode. And it's due to the fact that the hollow core plank is like a whole series of wide flanges lined up side, to, side by side. So in, its, in other words, it's not a few isolated ribs covered with decking. The decking uh, is actually a part of this wide flange kind of geometry that's making it work so effectively.
So armed with this information, we might uh, sort of think about how a building would be framed out. Um, 40 feet may not be wide enough in terms of our thinking about a sort of reasonable size of building, although you can certainly do a really beautiful building at a 40 foot width. So um, I'm not saying we shouldn't explore that idea at some point, but let's look more in terms of the kind of typical dimensions that we were uh, going after before. In this case, we could have a column line down the center and span 30 feet with our hollow core plank. So the idea here is we're representing the hollow core plank at uh, 12 inches deep with a two inch topping uh, spanning 30 feet. And in a second, we'll go ask, is that the right depth or not? But that would be the L over 30. And we're, I'm kind of grabbing at that because um, our range is L over 30 to L over 40. And we've said we're tending to design this building for fairly high live loads. So we probably, or we may be near the shallow end. So I picked uh, the 12 inch deep but that would certainly be a very cautious measure. But I've drawn it up in those proportions. So here we have our L-beam uh, at the boundary on each side, and then a simple rectangular girder on each side here. And in this case, because the spans won't go the full 68 feet with double T's, uh, I've introduced some columns here, and when I introduced the columns, I said, you know, we're probably going to have some circulation down the center of this building. That may or may not turn out to be the case, but I put some columns here and provided for an eight-foot corridor. So these are kind of a stab in the dark at a way of framing out a building where the depth is fairly reasonable. Um, so we have our uh, typical floor-to-floor -floor dimension of 14.8. And now all of a sudden we have a 12 foot 10 inch clearance up to the bottom of our uh, L-beam. So from a daylighting point of view, we've gained something by going to the double T's because the double, I mean the hollow core planks over double T's because the hollow core planks are inherently a lot shallower. Um, now just to check ourselves, I mean we can go back to our tables. And in fact, rather than start with the uh, uh, 12 inch deep, I'm going to go look at um, 8 inch deep. So here we have um, 8 inch deep hollow core planks, and I'm going to go down to something with a topping. So with a topping, it's going to be 10 inches deep, and I'm looking to span 30 feet. And I'd like to support at least 80 pounds a square foot, maybe more. And I discover that a 5.8S works. So this is five strands, 8 16 inch diameter, straight. So that's pretty simple and economical to do. And it'll support 95 uh, pounds per square foot of superimposed load. So in fact, my drawing was a bit cautious. And I could have actually done this with 8 inch plank, which with the topping would run it up to 10 inches of depth, whereas here with the topping I'm at 14. So I could have gotten another 4 inches of clearance here on the glass, so we'd be up at 13 feet 2 inches, and then this dimension would be actually 14 feet, uh, all to get uh, a, a very reasonable floor to floor dimension. So this is intended to sort of give you a taste of how you might think about going about using double T's and hollow core planks. Um, this, of course, is an incredibly shallow structure in the zone where we're really worried about getting daylighting into the building, which is uh, between the perimeter wall and about 30 feet deep into the building. That ends our video on sizing precast concrete spanning members focusing on hollow core planks and L-beams.